This is the Barbados Today Evening News for Thursday, April 13th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. We begin with news this evening that 21 people were injured in a three-car smash-up at Duke St. Thomas this afternoon. The accident occurred around 3.15. It involved a minibus carrying 18 passengers driven by a 30-year-old man, a motor van driven by a 39-year-old man, and a car with a 44-year-old woman behind the wheel. Five people were listed as seriously injured. And police spokesman Roland Cobbler says two have already been taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Officers from the Barbados Defense Force, the Barbados Fire Service, the Ambulance Service, and four doctors are at the scene of the accident. In other news this evening, it appears that MP for St. Andrew George Payne continues to enjoy strong support from his constituents, even as some voters say they have become disenchanted with politicians on both sides of the House. At the weekly Pulse of the People sample survey in the Northern Parish, most people who were interviewed indicated that they wanted Payne as their representative. In the Belle Plaine stronghold of his ruling Democratic Labour Party rival, Irene Sandiford Garner, there was no indication that she would still enjoy the level of support that she once did. But several of the residents lamented poor bus service and road conditions, as well as the closure of a number of social and recreational facilities. Bus is going to start here, we got to walk all here. Bus is start all to talk, we got to walk back down. I fear, I still have nice bag on fear. Plus you got children, children going to school down there. Go walk down here and down here to all the parking lot. Anybody can take them up. And that's sleeping up there. It's waiting, but waiting have to get a vote. And it's not doing nothing over here. Wait. Say so, I was here for the last three and a half years. The only rent, the only person from the area I actually saw was George King. And I saw him walk. He had come to act. He has just, he has just, he was driving the area actually. He saw the plant. So he came and took a look and he was very nice. And he actually spent a little while talking to me, getting to know me and my children. So you don't see are you most handy No, I never saw her in my life. I don't even know she was gonna see she on TV. <laughs> never saw her in three and a half years I was out here, never. So you'll be supporting George? Yeah, I'll be supporting him, yes. Do my house, you will get my vote. Right, I deal with Mr. Payne last night, that's the truth. Because Payne and Mr. Payne do a lot for San Andrew. When they first, when they, when they first went to squat San Andrew, I remember we had one road and one road out. That was true, turn us all. We got all the roads down here, down. And they fix all the roads. We had the two buses that were operate as one. We had the Bridge and San Andrew Church. And your bus left down, we had six o'clock in the morning. And, and a quarter, a quarter, seven. But no going to turn us off. We got God served all the roads. And all the people, the government get in power, he changed all that. I've always been a barber, they probably support him. We, we had a government representative down here that ruled down here for all the years. Never look out to do nothing for St. Andrew. Which is, you know, poor. And the Easter weekend is synonymous with kite flying across the island. Barbados today caught up with some kite vendors on the eve of the weekend to find out how sales were going. Well, for the past few years now, it was a little bit slow from the beginning. And then, like, right now, at this point, it's building it. Like, Barbados, like, having that sort of feeling right now from the kite, kite season. It's truly, truly part of my good Friday. Yeah. Being real, like, we get enough kite sales right now for like, three or four people coming in, like, circling, like, you know? Like a real supermarket. Okay. Everything consists of going to the lumber yard of your choice. See that the white material, such as the board, a soft light wood. Try to avoid, try to get with as at least among the not so the ones around where we want clean like this. You can look at the back here, we want clean. But when it's going not but it's just soft, right? Not meet the brick, you understand? You see? When it's going not so select the wood from the yard, nice, nice deal board. And then, you come home and you start to cut it up, you say it's cut you want. And after that, you do all your framing first. There's a mic program, do all your framing work, and after you do framing, then you start to pierce. I mean, start to line. It's just this procedure here, call this line. Then after you done line all, then you start to pierce, put on the body paper. And that's it. 
And a team from Barbados today also took to the streets to find out how overall sales have been ahead of the long weekend. Well, from the beginning of the week up to say Wednesday, it's been a bit slow, but we are expecting um, our business to come Thursday and on Saturday. Which department are you paying most customers Well, the perfume and cosmetics, and we have some customers also going out to the toys because they're getting baskets and stuff there. So many of those two are almost all half the departments. Well, leading up to this week, it was, it was kind of quiet, but starting this week, things have picked up. A lot. So we got a lot of it. It's the stuff which we had quite a bit this year. Uh, all these eggs, the, the baskets, the, the, the treats for the kids, chocolates, etc. Kites. We're almost all the kites now. So those kind of items have been going very good. Um, and this week, this week, last couple of days has been quite busy. Especially as I'm buying all that coming up. You know, the Friday, Easter, Monday. So the Easter, Easter items are have been going well. There's regional and international news after this short break. Potatoes, we my girl. How you want to see you for long? I can't. How you keeping? But you don't sell the nation paper no more. But that paper ain't selling. They must know it stop selling that. Oh. Look, one time I would make a little dollar from the sun to sun. Oh. But when Sunday night, I still trying to get the weather there. <laughs> but you know, you can't call that the sun to sun no more. You gotta call that sunset news. Call at no time down you stale. People complain that them ain't got nothing in it to read and the price keep going up all the time, all the time. A woman abused me so sick the other day, tell me that she just read Barbados today or life for free. Mm -hmm. I can take that abuse in soul, so I switched to my potatoes and yams. Well, let me tell you, if pork selling, you got to raise pigs. How much for the yams? Oh, 75 cents a pound. Oh. But that's cheaper than that stale news. Give me... How much you want? A pound. Only a pound? Anyhow, these eating real good. Let me wrap them up for you. Come. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. We are back now with news from the region. It's days before the official launch of the annual Spice Mass in Grenada, but there are reports that the organization responsible for planning the festivities is facing significant financial challenges. We get more from GBN News in St. George's. In his first official media interaction, ahead of next week's launch of Spice Mass, Chief Executive Officer Kirk Seetherhouse says the corporation has laid out a plan to generate income. In review in 2016, he said all final events for Carnival saw expenditure overriding income. The Soka Groovy Monarch show is often seen as a Carnival show which generates the most income but not so, says the Spice Mass Corporation's CEO. That show, he says, according to their data, last year had an income of $466,000, with expenditure of $643,000. PAN's income was $24,000, but carried expenditure of $376,000, representing over a 1,500% loss. Queen Show's income was $47,000, and the total expenditure one hundred and seventy-seven thousand. The match grow income, which generated fifty-seven thousand, was confronted with expenditure of two hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Further afield, the United States today dropped the largest non-nuclear device used in combat on a network of caves used by ISIS in eastern Afghanistan. President Donald Trump hailed the bombing as evidence of a more muscular U.S. foreign policy since he took office in January. White House spokesman Sean Spicer announced the news earlier today. Uh, at around 7 p.m. local time in Afghanistan last night, uh, the United States military used a GBU-43 weapon in Afghanistan. Uh, the GBU-43 is a large, powerful, and accurately delivered weapon. We targeted a system of tunnels and caves that ISIS fighters used uh, to move around freely, making it easier for them to target U.S. military advisors and Afghan forces in the area. The United States takes the fight against ISIS very seriously, and in order to defeat the group, we must deny them operational space, which we did. The United States took all precautions necessary to prevent civilian casualties and collateral damage as a result of the operation. And that's news this evening. Remember, you can get more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. 
We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you could tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good evening.